Wow. Holy brutes on a Covenant Armada with Slip Space and Sergeant Johnson on top. Arbiter sprinkles and candles lit by the three prophets. This was fucking incredible. So, I'm sure you've all seen the glorious trailer for Halo Infinite, aka Halo 6. And if you haven't, you need to GTFO and go watch it right now. It was on trending, goddamn. Someone said it got up to number 5, which is pretty freaking crazy considering we just had E3. So there's a bunch of other teasers, trailers, and stuff for other games. Let that put into perspective how impactful this trailer was. It's funny though, because I was on a video that Hidden Xperia made about our hopes and realistic predictions for Halo at E3, and most of us were on the more negative side of things. We really didn't have much hope, and even thought they wouldn't even announce it. As far as what I actually think's going to happen, honestly, I have no idea. We could just end up getting nothing. It's happened before. Chris Raygun's prediction was pretty spot on. If we get something about Halo 6, it better be a reveal trailer showing the old art style has made its full return. I don't give a shit if it doesn't make sense canonically. I don't care if people are gonna be like, oh, it looks different from Halo 5. I don't give a fuck. Br oh. Oh. And I'll put a link to Hidden Xperia's video if you're interested to look back on what our thoughts were now that they came out with something and you can compare it. That might be interesting. So overall, I thought this was a damn good trailer, with pretty much everything going for it. It's an interesting, if somewhat generic title. Halo Infinite, Doom Eternal, Battlefield Everlasting, Time Splitter's Great and Perfect Future, I don't know. But so what we're going to do is take a look at parts of the trailer, talk about them, what they might indicate, and see if we can find some possible secrets or easter eggs in the trailer. There's plenty of room for speculation and quite honestly, that's the best part of seeing a good trailer. Thinking about what it will all turn into, sharing our thoughts, going back and forth. I'll also go over what we know about the game and what we're being told by 343. Cause do keep in mind, those two things are very different. But well played, 343. Well fucking played. Oh, fuck yeah! This is the shit! Kill me now! I don't think many of us thought this was what you were going to show us. And I think most of us are pleasantly surprised. The build-up to the Master Chief reveal in the classic as fuck helmet from Halo 3? Butter. Pure butter. With a perfectly even spread on toast. And the finish the fight piano? Excellent. I just wanted to say that first before we jump into this. So the first part of the trailer starts off in the jungle and at the bottom it says Game Engine Demonstration. We'll talk more about this later. But if this is the real engine and how it's going to look, no tricks? This some serious gourmet shit! There's a whole bunch of world and atmosphere building in this trailer. And it's perfect because that's what Halo is. It's not supposed to have a bombastic, guns a and Call of Duty-like trailer. The best Halo trailers are the ones that want to mystify you. This trailer is very mysterious, serene, portraying the beauty of a Halo ring. This is one of the reasons why I like it so much. Halo is a series that always had intriguing locations, architecture, landscapes, and they show it off here in full force. When I first watched this, I didn't know what to make about all the shots of wildlife and animals. They didn't look exactly alien to me, I didn't know what the point was, but the idea of a more lively, inhabited journey across a Halo ring is something I am 110% down for. Remember those old concept arts and scrapped ideas Bungie had for wildlife, animals with the original games? That's what I'm seeing here. Fucking immersion, and a Halo ring that feels more alive. So the camera focuses in on these hieroglyphics, and the reason they did that is... because it's gonna be important for something? Probably. People might try to decipher them, perhaps it holds a clue. Maybe it's an ancient saying, or it could indicate past human life on a halo ring. That'd be really cool, actually. Maybe the Forerunners had a band of humans that they let loose on the ring to study them? Now you can hear a crackling fire inside this cave. I'm assuming it's a cave. So, something started that fire. We'll find out if it's something new, eh? These hieroglyphics could just be something to build the atmosphere and nothing more, so I wouldn't look too far into them. We then get our first glance at what the Forerunner architecture is gonna look like, and I suspect we'll see these cool rings all over the game. Next we see a radio in what looks like a human encampment. Some big creature stomps by and knocks it over, signaling that maybe some of the wildlife we see won't all be friendly. There are big tracks leading into the forest. The creature who stomped by was probably that rhino. Now. This shot is very interesting, because
because at first glance you might not know what's illuminating the sky. But judging from the color and direction, I think it's safe to say this is one of those towers from Combat Evolved on the second mission Halo. You could speculate that 343 are planning to construct this game in the ring in a very reminiscent manner of the first game, and perhaps try to replicate the mystery and awe that was captured so well in Combat Evolved. Personally, when I see a game or a company or a person going back to the roots of what made them who they are today, most of the time I see that as a good thing, and that's the way I feel with Halo Infinite. The Rhinos move out, either towards or away from something, there's another shot of a human camp and what looks like a downed pelican, almost as if the pelican crashed and some other people came along and turned it into a makeshift camp. Whatever the case, by the looks of things it's been there a long time. Everything in the trailer has a sort of old world charm to it. The covers here are ripped, the setting looks old, a bit dilapidated, but still so beautiful. And I love this visual style that they're presenting. Someone on Twitter pointed out to me that in here, you can actually see a poster that says, Fight for her. The very same slogan seen on a poster in the Pillar of Autumn at the start of the first game. Once again, another nod to Combat Evolved. Perhaps this pelican came from the Pillar of Autumn. Perhaps this has some connection to the events of the first game. We'll find out. We see something illuminating the water below. Looks like some sort of creature and not a submarine, boat, or anything mechanical. Maybe we'll see some underwater combat, or something familiar like the gondolas and those elevator pod things from Halo 2. Then we see shadows on the beach. Oh my, who could that be? Of course it's a bunch of marines with badass looking guns and man, their battle rifles look so dope. But then there's a flare, signaling evac, or is it just the landing zone? Well we can see one of the marines here is hurt. As far as what these guys were fighting, we'll just have to imagine. These rings are so fucking cool by the way. We get a wide shot of the area, the flare, beach in the background, and wildlife up front. Kinda summing up everything we just saw. This is going pretty good- WHAT?! Oh hell yeah! Homeboy is back! He's back and he looking sexy as fuck, boy! Woo! No Poncho though, so uh, those of you who were looking for Poncho Master Chief, uh, sorry kiddo. Now if you pay attention, in his helmet you can see the reflection of a scout warthog. Doesn't really indicate anything cause the next shot he's driving that warthog, but still a nice little detail. And aw oh, yeah, scenic driving on a halo ring. If this doesn't signal the return and the reference and placing value on Combat Evolved where the series began, I don't know what does. These are all good signs, people. I don't have to tell you that Combat Evolved is one of the best games ever made. I don't have to tell you that it revolutionized the FPS market. So to see 343 place a lot of emphasis on the things that made that game great, and bringing that to a more modern setting with modern graphics and technology and all these innovations, y you got me, hook, line, and sinker. I mean, I want to see some wide open, huge levels for us to explore, twice the size of Halo. And then you got those familiar towers fully revealed, just like I was saying. It's pretty goddamn epic, powered by the slip space engine and oh, 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 what, 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 what's that? And 343 finishes the trailer by reminding us about our old friend. No telling if her appearance is going to be as cheesy and bad as it was in the last game, but I hope not. It's interesting to note that there is no actual combat or quote unquote action in this trailer. It's pretty safe in its presentation and feels more about establishing the world more than anything else, more than giving us a glimpse into what the story's gonna be about. And it does seem like they're replicating the buildup and excitement of Halo 3, which works pretty goddamn well in tandem with all the references and similarities between Combat Evolved. So that's the whole trailer and about everything noteworthy that I could find in it. There's probably some more to it and please, please, Feel free to share your thoughts and speculations in the comments below. This is the first time in a while we've gotten some legitimate good Halo news to talk about, so let's do it boys and gals. Moving on, there's a very important post on Halo Waypoint about this new game, Halo Infinite. Some things to go off of and talk about, so let's do that, shall we? It's called Our Journey Begins, and I'll link it in the description for you to check out on your own. Written by Chris Lee, the studio head of FPS? The studio head of first-person shooters? 
across the world? Damn, Chris Lee's got the monopoly. So it says, It's been a busy stretch since the launch of Halo 5 Guardians. Between supporting the title with post-release updates and secretly working on our new Slipspace engine, finally showing the world some of what we've been working on has really energized the team. So, we've been working on this new engine for at least two years by the sound of it, which is actually really cool. I mean, this is going to be a game changer, literally, and it looks to be capable of great things. Forgeable AI, wink wink nudge nudge. Now they do say, and here's where it gets a little sketchy, that everything we see is running on the in-game engine. Now, we all want to believe that, no question, but just remember that at one point this was promised to us, but what we got was this. This was promised. So Halo 2 Anniversary will contain the original Halo 2 multiplayer exactly as it shipped 10 years ago. But ended up being this. We had high hopes when we saw this, and then it became this. Now I'm saying this because somebody has to. The game industry has a tendency to oversell us on what their games will actually look like, so take it with a grain of salt. And if it looks as good as it does here, then fuck yeah, I am so down for that. Right off the bat, 343 mentions that they've learned from Halo 4 and 5, uh, don't see MCC in there, hello, please, don't forget about that game. And of course, the community. You know, there were some bumps in the road, quite a few big bumps, some that nearly destroyed the car, but things in my eyes look to be back on track. They say they have a new art style that draws significant inspiration from the most iconic and historic parts of the Halo franchise, and your feedback. Oh, thanks, baby. We saw what they were talking about in the trailer, how the game will look, and it looks fantastic. They say they've heard loud and clear about the time spent playing as Chief in Halo 5, and that this game will focus on the Master Chief and continue his saga and his story after the events of Halo 5. There's no telling at the moment how Locke, Blue Team, Osiris, Palmer, Halsey, Lasky, Warden Eternal, or any of those other characters are gonna fit in. We, we have nothing on anybody but the Chief and these Marines. And this is good. The lack of Chief in Halo 5 was definitely not something that brought the game any praise from people. So, then there's the confirmation that this is a direct sequel to Guardians. I'm gonna tell it right here, right now, because I said it back then, and it's still true now. It will be incredibly hard to recover from the holes and mistakes of Halo 5 story and campaign, and it's gonna take a whole lot of goodness to bring fans back into the fold, back into the story, excited to see what happens. Maybe this is just a recovery phase where they play the story safe and just give us something that works on its own and, and plays off 5 a bit and just tries to get things back on track. Chris Lee says it can be hard waiting, and they are taking the time they need to make the right game and are making changes to how they approach things. They want to please existing fans and bring new ones in. They'll have unexpected directions to take folks in, building alongside the community. They reveal there's going to be some type of beta or insider program like there was for MCC, which I need to go get some lube for so I can be ready when the time comes. They also mention playing alongside 343 employees, so that's pretty cool too. And the rest of the article is thanking the fans, talking about moving forward, and it's all good stuff. So, to sum everything up from this article and the trailer, what we have is a new engine that'll run everything, hopefully look fantastic. There's an attempt being made to bring Halo back to its roots with the nods to the first game and Halo 3, and familiar aspects of those two. We know it's going to have split screen as Bonnie Ross gave us that tidbit a while back. It's a direct sequel to Halo 5, which will focus more on Chief. Part of it is going to take place on a Halo ring, cause duh, we haven't actually been on one in 10 years. And judging from the presentation of the trailer, there might be a significant emphasis on wildlife in a more lively setting, possible gameplay implications. Kind of like that big dinosaur thing in Halo Reach that you only fought once. I'd love to see more of that. They're going to have a beta and or insider program for the game, and it all seems to be a big effort on 343's part to engage with the community and make the best possible game alongside with us, involving us, and that makes me feel good. 
And I think that about covers it. I'm super excited for this new game, Halo Infinite. It might even be possible that Marty O'Donnell returns to do the music, who knows? There's so much to speculate and talk about. And these were my thoughts and impressions. If I could summarize how I feel overall, the trailer showed me a Halo game that has everything I look for. It shows me that as a possibility. Don't get your hopes too high though. This is for sure good news and a good trailer and there's no telling yet how the game will actually turn out, what the multiplayer will be like, what the story will be about, etc. It's okay to be skeptical, that's always good to tamper expectations a bit, so you aren't super disappointed if things don't turn out the way you wanted them to. But what do you think? What are your predictions for this game? What do you want to see most and what do you think we'll see in the multiplayer campaign, forge, firefight, all that jazz? Will rec packs return, microtransactions, loot boxes, man so much to talk about. So post your thoughts in the comments below. That's all I've got for today, this is the Act Man signing out. Peace!